Hey guys, welcome to the video. My name is Delaya from TheDelayaB.com and I'm a fashion designer who helps ambitious creatives personalize their styles so they can feel better and bolder about themselves and their passions. My channel is about fashion design style and self, so if any of that resonates with your soul, go on and hit that subscribe button right now. So if you didn't know, we're in the middle of a five-part series about beginning to sew and what you as a beginner should know about sewing. So last week in part two, we covered the 10 essential tools that you'll need as a beginning sewer. These are the 10 items that you have to have in your sewing kit. This week, we're going to cover a few things that you need to know to not be a lazy sewer. This is basically following the protocols and the little bitty steps to prepare your projects and whatnot. In part 5 of the series, I'm doing a Q&A, so if you have any questions about sewing or fashion design, feel free to leave a comment in the comment box, and I will answer that question in that video. Also, I have an announcement. When I created this 5 part series, I didn't intend on teaching you guys how to sew, like I wasn't going to go step by step. But, I've been getting questions about specific sewing and like how to actually sew. So, what I'm thinking about doing is offering a sewing workshop, it'll probably be two to three days, very beginner, very basic. So if you actually want to learn how to sew, very beginning steps, there is a link in the description box. You can click it and sign up. The details for the workshop are still in works, but if you want to be notified and alerted when it drops or when it's available, sign up. Okay, now that we got the announcements covered, let's get into the video. So this week we are talking about the things that you need to do in order not to be considered a lazy slower. What does that mean? A lazy sewer is basically a person who doesn't follow standard sewing practices that make sure your project come out the best in the end. Sometimes we don't want to do the small things because we think it's tedious, but not doing the small things actually can make your project come out of trash in the end, and we don't want that to happen. Disclaimer, I don't do everything on this list. Sometimes I'm a lazy sewer. Sometimes it bees like that. But overall, you want to try and make sure you're practicing these practices to make sure you get the best of the best of what you can do. The first thing on the list is you want to learn the terms of sewing. In sewing, just like any other hobby or practice that you do, it'll have its own vocabulary, its own words that mean things because words mean things. You'll hear things like shears, seam allowance, bobbin, thread, salvage, cross grain. A whole lot of things. Things that you don't hear in your everyday life. And that's fine, but in order to be the best sewer that you can be or even just follow along in a sewing conversation, you'll want to learn these terms. You'll want to get familiar with these terms. The best way to learn terms is your good old friend Google. Google will help you out with this. If you see something you're not familiar with, type it in and ask for a definition. Next on the list is you want to pre-wash your fabric. This means when you buy fabric from the store, you want to wash it first. Wash it in the washing machine, maybe even dry clean it depending on the type of fabric. What happens when you wash fabric is that it will normally shrink. Fabric have a natural shrinkage after it's hit by water and heat. It will most likely not be the same size when you take it out the washer dryer. So when you pre-wash, you are basically taking out that risk factor when you wash a final garment. If you sew a garment that actually fits you, it's made to your size, and you wash it afterwards, what's likely to happen is the fabric will shrink and it won't fit you the way it's supposed to or it'll just be too small altogether. And you want to make sure that you didn't go through all this blood, sweat, and tears to have a garment that you can no longer wear. Next thing you want to do is prepare your fabric and your pieces. If you just pulled your fabric out of the washing machine, out of the dryer, it's a very high chance that your fabric is wrinkled. So, you want to take the time to iron it out and make sure everything is smooth. If you lay your patterns down on a wrinkled piece of fabric, what's going to happen is it's not going to be the correct size. Like maybe you have a little bunch of fabric right here, you lay your pattern on it, like you have this extra excess fabric that's in here. You don't want that, so you want to make sure that everything is flat and smooth when you iron it out to make sure that your pattern piece that you're cutting is the correct size. Beyond that, some garments, some designs require interfacing fusible interfacing, whatever type of interfacing. There's quite a few. So what this does is it stabilizes your pieces and your garment. It helps garments not warp or skew as it's being worn throughout time. You want to make sure that you do this step so your garment will not warp or change throughout time. The next thing you want to make sure you have in order not to be considered a lazy sewer are the proper needles and the proper 
pins. Needles and stick pins have different thicknesses, different weights for different types of fabric. Some fabrics are finer, some fabrics are heavier, so they require different pins and needles. So with sewing, there's different types of fabrics. You have heavyweight, thick fabric like denim, and then you have lightweight fabric like silk or chiffon. Both fabrics should be used with different types of needles because if you use denim, you're going to need something strong to go through the layers, whereas with something finer like silk, you want to make sure that the needle isn't leaving holes behind. So this is why we require different needles for different fabrications. Also, different types of fabrics like knit require their own needle. They don't need a super sharp point, they need a ball point. So as you're buying needles, as you're buying stick pins, just pay attention to this. There are universal needles and pins that you can use that will generally work for almost every type of fabric. But if you want to make sure that your project comes out great, you want to make sure that you're using the proper tools. Universal needles can be used on lightweight, very thin fabrics, but you may get some warping or puckering as you stitch. They can also be used with denim, but the more layers you use, the easier it'll be for them to break. So you want to make sure that you're using the proper needles for the proper project. The fourth thing you want to do is make sure that you are using matching thread. This is pretty self-explanatory. When you buy fabric, you want to buy matching thread to go along with it. Color is a very strange thing. It's a very temperamental thing. So sometimes shades are off. And when you're in the sunlight or even in a really well-lit room, it's easy to see that a shade of a red is off from another shade of a red or a shade of a black is off from another shade of a black. Having a color that's a shade off looks a little tacky and cheap. Say you're doing a top stitching and your red from your thread is a little off from the red on your pants. It looks like a mistake was made, like something was not supposed to happen here. So you want to make sure that you're looking your best, you're looking crisp and clean. And I always believe that details matter and top stitches are my favorite. So this is pretty important to me. You want to try and make sure that your thread matches. Unless it's a contrast thread, like denim uses a brown thread or you're just contrasting something, fine. But if you're not contrasting, if it's not an intentional design feature, you want to try and make sure that your thread matches. Also, if you're a beginning sewer, you may not have tension down right. So, if you're sewing a seam and say your seam is stretched and it, you can see the stitches in there and your thread is a whole different color from your fabric, it's not a good look. Say you're sewing something white or you say you're sewing something gray and if there's a, like a little stretch and you can see the stitches in there and that's black that's not cute it can make the garment look cheap like you didn't care and we don't want that so when you are buying fabric try your best to make sure you get a matching thread sometimes it's hard like if you're shopping at joann's or if you're I don't know, shopping somewhere that doesn't carry a lot of options of thread, I know it's hard. But, you know, just do your best. The fifth thing you want to do to make sure that you're not a lazy sewer is to test your stitches. You want to make sure that you're getting the cleanest, crispest stitch for your specific fabric. Like I said earlier, different fabric types require different needles and different pins, and they also require different stitch settings. So you want to test this out before you start sewing your actual garment because you don't want to mess that up. Like you don't want to make extra mistakes for no reason. But when you're ready to sew, you have a sewing project ready to go, you want to take a scrap of your fabric, maybe a little rectangle or like a real legit scrap, fold it and then sew it through your sewing machine. Do a few test stitches beforehand to make sure that your sewing is great and it looks good. That way you'll know that your tension is set right, everything is good to go and you won't be looking a mess out here. No. The sixth thing you want to do to make sure you're not being a lazy sewer is to clip your threads. As you sew, there will be a bunch of threads. Each stitch is about four pieces of threads that need to be cut. So you want to make sure that you're cutting these as you go. If you wait to cut them or you're being lazy, <laughs> there's a chance that at the end you won't be able to get a crisp cut. There may be an area where you can't get as close of a cut as you would like to and now it's too late, you can't go back. It will just be a hanging thread and it won't look as crisp, as clean as it could have looked. So as you're going, make sure you're cutting the threads close to the fabric, close to the seam, so it won't be in the way or an unsightly mess when you're finished. 
Next up on the list is you want to make sure, make absolutely sure that you are pressing as you go. To iron these seams, press these corners, crease these edges as you go. You want to make sure these things are laying flat before you continue to the next step. If you do not press your seams as you go, it will look like trash at the end. Don't spend all this time for your garment to look like trash. Ironing is a very, very important part to a good crisp finished project. If you are sewing and you are not ironing these edges down and you are not pressing these seams, it will look very bulky, very gross, very blah by the end. Like you want to make sure that you're getting in here with your iron. You want to make sure that things are laying flat. Doing it as you go, just like clipping your threads, at a certain point you may not be able to reach a certain seam you need to reach. That's why we do it as we go, because it's easier. So after each seam, after each corner, make sure you press them down, make sure they look clean. Next on the list is you want to make sure you test unfamiliar techniques. I admire confidence, I admire bravery, but if it's something that you're not familiar with, don't be scared or hesitant to test it on a scrap fabric first. You don't want to be sewing your final garment and you make a dumb mistake. So please, test it on a scrap fabric. Test anything new that you have never done before on a, on a scrap fabric. Sewing has a bunch of strategies, techniques, or whatever. You can get to the same result in different ways. Like, that's fine. But you also want to have a little bit of confidence when you're doing these techniques. So in order to build that confidence, you should have something on the side. You should test on the side before you get to your final garment. So test on a scrap of fabric, cut, sew, whatever. Just test it before you get to your final garment. Because if you do an unfamiliar technique on your final garment and you mess up, that's it. Especially if you have to cut. You can't take back a cut. So test on scrap, test before going to your final garment. I do this in the tuxedo robe. I had to do a welt pocket. I hadn't done a welt pocket in a long time. So I tested on scrap fabric before I hit the real garment. Good thing I did because the first test that I did was crap. So had I done that on the garment, that pocket would have been crap. Just test it out first. There's nothing wrong with testing it out. It's going to take extra time, yes, but it's better to be safe than sorry. And the last thing you want to do in order not to be considered a lazy sewer is to keep learning. Keep learning your craft, keep getting better, keep learning new techniques, keep challenging yourself. Whatever you can get your mind on, keep learning. Grow. This is the best way to not be a lazy sewer. Don't be satisfied with where you are. Don't get stuck where you are. We don't do stagnant. We go up, we do better. It's a learning game. It's a long-term game. If you want it to be, like if you don't want it to be fine, like go sew your one thing over and over. But if sewing is something you want to be good at, sewing is something you want to go deep into, believe me, there's a lot you can go deep into sewing, into designing and all that. Don't be lazy. Learn something new. Test yourself. Challenge yourself. If you don't get it right, fine, good, whatever, what have you. Do it again. Do it over and over and over again. You're not going to get things off the bat. You're not going to get things straight away. But you will improve. With each lesson comes improvement. There's no failure, just improvement. There's no failure, just lessons. Keep going. Keep trying. Keep doing. So again, this is video three of a five-part series. Today we talked about 10 things you need to do in order not to be considered a lazy sewer. Next week, I'm going to share a few resources that you can hit up, look into, resources that you can use on your journey. This is things you can learn from, people you can learn from, people to follow, and all that jazz. So if you want more on that, come back next week. Subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you know when that video drops. In part five of the series, I'm doing a Q&A. So if you have any questions about beginning sewing, techniques, or whatever, leave your questions in the comments and I will answer them in that video. All right, so that's today's video. Thank you for watching. Until next time, guys, remember to stay safe and keep designing your best life. Bye.